Yay, it seems the camera's working. Can you hear me? Hi, Jeremy. I can hear you. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> yep, uh, I can hear you. Thank you to Lin Linda. Yeah? Yep, I can hear you fine. Excellent. I want to say a special thank you to Linda for turning up like two hours early. I know, I was so keen and eager. That's how organized I am. And thank you, I don't Jeremy, know. for putting everything on, by the way. No secrets. <laughs> no secrets in the crypto world, mate. It's all decentralized. Everybody knows what you're doing. You can't hide a thing. Gosh. Uh -huh. Well, won't you that I'm blonde then, will I? Uh, that's all right. See, all, all of my mistakes were public last time, too. You know, I was I was smart enough to record the um the video, but all I got was the video of Matt smiling and staring at the screen, <laughs> and there was no dialogue. So that that's all I had, and and luckily Miliani actually recorded everything. So um, yeah, she's good to have on board. Hey, Lindsay, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good, 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 very good. Looks like a smaller call tonight than last week, and that's good. So. We won't have too many people talking over the top of each other. And it's probably a function of the people who just didn't want to do their homework. So thank you for the you guys who turned up because I know you've done your homework and you're here early and on time, which is excellent. So shall we let one of the girls go first, Matt? Sure. Good afternoon, Jeremy. Yeah, if you like, I can blank out my screen so you haven't got my head. This <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> no, Muliani's figured it all out now. Mate. I'm, I'm, I'm good with sort of stocks and shares and things like that, but I'm not real good on technology, which is why I have someone like her. I was just trying to do the thing. I thought if I'm talking or whatever interfacing, I can see you. It's only fair that you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very good. Now I'm going to see if I can open up the. Um, little chat box on the side too. So if you if you think of something while someone else is talking, you can actually type it in the chat box so you don't interrupt the flow of the conversation and then we'll get to that when they're finished. So Linda, I think it's it's fair if we start with you because you were here first, like at three fifty seven this afternoon. <laughs> Thank um, you. I'm did you do for your homework on Yeah. <laughs> Um, homework I didn't do because I wasn't here last week. And secondly, okay. um, I um, obviously just joined today. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm brand spanking new to all of this. So um, yeah, I'm like, it's all new. Okay. Don't, don't worry. We're, we're, we're all beginners. You know, I mean, the, the, crypto, the crypto space, like Bitcoin's been around for, I don't know, what, six years now. Yeah. Um, but it was very, very dark for a long time. There was only a few people who knew about it. And, and the rest mm -hmm. of the, the coins and the rest of the investments have been around for like 18 months tops. Um, so we're all very, very new in this space. And on, on last week's call, I said there, are, there is no silly questions. There's just the questions that you didn't ask. And then you forget to find out. And there are a few scams operating around on Google because this is a completely unregulated space. Um, like if you transferred five dollars from your Commonwealth Bank to my Westpac account, but you got one digit wrong and it ended up in in Matt's or Lindsay's, then you could actually go to the bank and reverse that. Um, but in this space, you can't. Yeah, you know, once the money's gone, it's gone. If you click on a link that looks like it's you know my Ether wallet, but they had one of the one of the letters or numbers different, your money's mm. gone. So it's it's really important to actually you know, have a few trusted friends who you can talk to rather than just relying on the information on the internet because there are some scams out there that are deliberately trying to trap people. Well, uh, I have noticed have... on Facebook. Um, there's uh, ever since I started like liking pages and um, you know that sort of thing and being in groups, all these random posts keep coming up about it, and I clicked mm -hmm. on one of them and it took me to this link that just went on and on and on and on and on. I thought, oh my God, this has got to be leading to something. So I just, you know, clicked out of it. But, yeah, you know, it's just one of those things, isn't it? You don't know um, what it's really all about. So I, I get that it's a very um, dangerous space, I guess, as well. And you have to be super, super uh, careful. And that's going to be, I guess, a few of my questions. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. So have you got any, did, did you watch the recording of last week's call? Um, yeah, I started watching it about an hour ago and um, in between getting kids dinner and everything, I've been coming back in watching it. Yep, so yep. 
Yeah, um, uh, yeah, there was a few good, interesting things in there. Um, but, yeah, I think I, there's just so much to take on board. Like I've set up a, um, let me tell you what it's called, a, a coin spot account and, and done a small, you know, group of about 10 queens, mm-hmm. like may, mainly the top 10. Um, yeah. And I haven't set up separate wallets and only because I was like, oh, my God, how do you do that? And then yeah. how do you do that? And then how do you do that? So it's like... yeah. It's very complicated, but I'm sure once you've been doing it for a while, you can get your head around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is new. I've got a friend of mine living here in Brisbane, and um, he actually grew up as a Maasai warrior. Like, you know, he, he lived in a mud hut. He was out in the middle of the bush, didn't have electricity, had never seen a light switch. He knew that aeroplanes were about this big because they buzzed overhead like a beetle. Um, and, you know, after he became a man and killed a lion with his bare hands and, and did all the stuff that you're supposed to do, he just sort of woke up one day and went, there's got to be something more. And he just started walking. And um, after a few days of walking, he actually came to a real town rather than a village. And he'd never seen electricity. He'd never seen a wallet or money or <laughs> anything like this. And he made friends with a few people and they decided to bring him out to Australia because there's not very many Maasai people um around so they decided to bring him out as a bit of a curiosity and he ended up learning english and getting on the speaking circuit and things like that but oh, wow. you you, f- you forget that you've, you've grown up with this stuff like my kids are all over the internet you know my son's setting up mining rigs for bitcoin and things like that mm-hmm. um because he was born after we had the internet at home so yeah. he's always had it um but for me you know learning the internet back in the early days of the the 90s was yeah. just like, oh my God, how do I know when I'm online and how do I know when I'm offline and what's that funny noise and you know, what's the virus and that sort of stuff. So yeah. let's stick, stick with it. There's, there's a bit of, bit of basic training um, on the Krillionaire website. So I've updated that since last week when the, when the call was on. Um, and there's a lot more stuff on there. There's a few videos of mine. There's one of my books, one of Jamie's books, a couple of Jamie's videos. Um, and I've also been putting on a whole bunch of coins that I've been researching. So for the people who didn't have do their homework i had them covered as well because I, I researched about 20 coins this week so i could hand them out so when, when you say you picked the top 10 were they just like the ones that were available on the exchange basically yeah and i mean yeah. look that might be a little bit naive but you know i just wanted to have a go and um put myself in there and um you know i did put a lot of money in each of them just to see what happened um yeah. But, you know, just before Christmas, I became very aware of it and, um, you know, basically Bitcoin and thought, I really want to um, learn more about this. There's something about it. I've got to know more. Like, it's just coming to my awareness that I've got to know more about it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to whack the um, web link in there for you so you can go and check that out. Um, and get some some basic 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 training. So I mean, as, as I say, everybody's new to this space. I've had 25 years of being involved in the stock market and the property market, and I'm using that strategy to bring into the crypto market, which doesn't always work out perfectly, but it's it's as close enough as anybody's worked out because we don't have 200 years of of history of cryptocurrencies. Now, we do have 200 years of, of stock markets and property markets, but we don't have 200 years of cryptocurrency. So I can't even look at what's happened in the past. Yes. It's just sort of looking at something else and saying, this is kind of like this, and, and we'll work out what it does. Later on in the call, I'm going to give you a little tool, um, some patented technology that I've, I've invented uh, to help you to actually choose the best one because there literally are, there's, there's over 2,000 coins at the moment. Mm-hmm. and yeah. it's very hard to to pick the ones and and some of them some people are saying you know almost half of them are scams as well so yeah. you know how do you know which ones which ones are which That's um right. okay so thank you. thank you for sharing lindy uh, and sorry linda and make sure you take copious notes and we'll have this um, recording for you as well as the other even if you even if you want to watch it twice that's okay you can watch it two or three times until you thank get you. the hang of it because I, I tend to talk very fast. And on the other call, I was talking very fast because I was talking over 25 people. Uh, Lindsay, what Hello. have you got? What have you got to share with us? Um, well, I've got um, some brief notes that I took on a few coins 
that we were looking at or that we're into. There's one called mm-hmm. Tron. Tron, yes. Yep, sounds yep. just sound. Honestly, that just sounds cool, right? But, it does. Um, <laughs> it's TRX it's, is the symbol for that one. Yeah, so that's um, to bring all the entertainment platforms together to be, you know, like uh, about digital entertainment and I guess really to be the main currency to use on um, that sort of platform. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is Sia Coin. So, yeah, so yes. it's like cloud storage and it's allowing people to rent out the parts of their hard drives that they're not using. Yeah. So they can make money, but also, you know, it's sort of, I guess everything's becoming more of a, um, I don't know what the right word is, but I guess like Uber, where we're all providing the services and um, instead of corporations or things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So any, anybody who's familiar with Google Drive or Dropbox, you realize, you know, you can store files on, on Dropbox and you pay Dropbox, you know, $10 a month or something like that. And they've just mm. got these big servers stored underground, but there's millions of people around the world with space on their hard drive. So why don't we actually, you know, cut the middleman out of the, out of the operation and start storing your files on other people's computers. But it is obviously encrypted. Um, and if I wanted to have, say, you know, even this video, I wouldn't want some people seeing this video. Um, there would be like 1% of it stored on this drive and 1% of it stored on that drive. So no one could actually access the whole thing unless mm. they had all my passwords and encryptions and things like that. So yes, Sia is, is a very, very good one. I, I like the idea behind that. Um, mm. Operationally, it's, it's very good. And, and, and for you, Linda, that's, that's something to look out for is, is what's the technology behind the coin and how does it do something different or better than, than what other people have done it before. Yes. So, as as um, Lindsay said, it's it's like Uber. You know, they're just going direct to the the people, peer to peer, rather than having the taxi company or the storage company in between. So, excellent, Lindsay. What else you got? Uh, there's one. I I don't know a lot about it, but it's um it was called Digitex. Digitex. Um, a uh, Digitech. I think yeah. that's the right word. Um, it's a Bitcoin futures trading. Um, mm-hmm service i suppose which is commission free yeah so i i need to like look further into that. i just thought that sounded quite interesting um okay but again i mean there's so many out there that you don't know which ones are you know sort of like viable and um yeah which ones are just trying to do something that might not work i guess mm, mm. Yeah, I, I compare it to the dot com boom and, and the social media boom and you know, people remember when Google Plus tried to be a thing and when Face uh, not Facebook, who's the other one? MySpace tried to be a thing. Um mm-hmm. so you know, maybe maybe fifty percent or two thirds of these companies, you know, will not a- actually succeed over the next five years. Um but as long as you're diversified like what what Linda is, you know, putting into the top ten. Um, then you're going to be okay because in the top 10, you would have bought Facebook, you would have bought Google, you would have bought Yahoo and Amazon and something else. And if half yeah. of them go broke and the other half go up 500%, then you're still going to be pretty happy. So I, I haven't heard of Digitech. Um, <laughs> as far as I knew, Bitcoin futures were only trading on the Chicago Board of Exchange, the CBO and right. the CM in America. Um, yeah. And I think one of those actually stopped so, um, yeah, Bitcoin futures is, is an interesting one. And I'd, I'd be mm. interested to see how they're going to do it differently than how the big stock exchanges were doing it. So, yeah. 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 Excellent. And, and did you have any, any questions for the group? Um, look, I guess the main thing I was sort of getting interested in or excited about, it was um, the possibility to trade cryptos because I do know a little bit about trading yeah. and I was sort of kept out of trading because of the time dis- not, it's not the, the, the time difference between you know the US but it feels like cryptos make it a little bit more of a 24-hour market so absolutely it might be open again so I was like oh is there any special yeah. way of doing it or do you just apply the same rules so I, I've been applying the same rules 
um, as, as I did with, with stocks and shares. Um, and as, as we've looked at previously, it is unregulated. So, you know, you can't go to ASIC and complain that this managing director lied to people or this company made up that they had this wonderful magnetic technology that gave them free energy as, as one of those multi-level marketing guys were saying that they had free energy because they didn't have to pay for electricity because they were using magnets and heat and stuff. It was all bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no one to complain to because there's no regulator. So yeah. if, if you're aware of that, there's no regulation and you go, okay, there's no protection, but also I can run this thing 24 seven. And if you get hold of a bit of information, like if you find out about SIA before all of your friends find out about SIA, then you're the one with the inside knowledge. You can actually engage in insider trading because there's no law against it. You can, you can buy truckloads of the stock. So mm. yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun and exciting and it's dangerous. It's like the wild, wild west. Um, <laughs> but if you do your research and you protect yourself, then, then you're going to be okay. So, and you'll learn very, very fast. As I said, you, can, you can be trading at three o'clock in the morning or, or any time at all, because there's yeah. always people from India and China and Korea and, and that sort of stuff on. So af after this call, I've actually got a call with, um, with two guys, one in South Africa and one in India. Um, and about the top coins that they're using in the region. Because we think, you know, like, oh, this is America and Australia and Canada, but we're only half a billion people who speak English. Yeah. Um, yes. Meanwhile, there's, you know, 1.6 billion Chinese who are on the, um, the Binance platform mostly. Um, yeah. There's 1.2 million in, sorry, 1.2 billion in India, and there's a billion in Africa. And a lot of these guys, not so much China now, they've had the technology for the last probably 10 or 15 years, but still in India and, and in Africa, they're in very, very early days of, of banking. And I was talking to, um, to a friend a couple of weeks ago in Zimbabwe. And if, if he's got US dollars in his bank account, they're not printing the, the Zimbabwe dollars anymore. They're only using the US dollars, but whatever they can smuggle into the country. So he might have $150 in his bank account and he goes to the bank and says, like, I'd like to withdraw $10. And they say, we don't have $10. We don't, literally don't have the cash. We just don't have a supply of cash, but we can yeah. give you $8 in US dollars. But however, we will take $13 out of your account. That's what the bank was charging. Sometimes 50 to 90% above oh the spot rate of the cash. Yeah. So these guys from the third world countries are really, really hungry because most of them have got smartphones. That's how they communicate yeah. with people in the next village. There's no, there's no overhead, you know, what phone lines and things like that out there but they've all got smartphones and they can all connect with each other. So yeah, banking for them is, is going to be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Mm. So. I did, I did see you posted earlier about Venezuela. They're looking yeah. into using crypto. So yeah, it sort of stands to reason, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the, the banking infrastructure, like a lot of the banks are complaining and whinging, like, you know, we're going to get cut out now. Same as the, the taxi companies were cut out when Uber, Uber and Lyft turned up. Um, so some of the banks are actually investing into crypto. Um, Origin Energy is actually uh, investing into Power Ledger because they realise they're going to be cut out unless they do that. So yeah. they either evolve or they die. So very cool. Thank you. Thank um, you. So we'll have a chat to Matt and then we'll have a chat to Quentin who's just turned up. So Matty, what have you got for us, mate? Uh, where are we? I'll put my video back on now. You can look at my smiling face again. Um, <laughs> I guess my mind's sort of been blown. We owe you a cup of or owe you a cup of coffee. What are we going to do there? You said each week we'll chip in a, a few bucks. So yeah, you got to buy me a cup of coffee, mate. That's that's the deal. Well, let us know how you want us to do that. I have to do with Bitcoin or something. I haven't figured that bit out. I, mean, yeah. I went to this on the weekend, which is the crypto fast track with Roscoe Patterson. He's touring around. Oh no, Roscoe, yeah. Yeah, well, I went to that in um, Sydney on the weekend and my mind was just blown with the potential. Basically, you discussed all the things you've talked about. We talked about arbitrage and ICOs. Um, yeah. There was people trading. There was people, obviously, in the side tech. It was just every different angle you could think of was yeah. there from hearing different perspectives. And again, as you say, it's uncharted territory, so everyone's got their own opinion. And I mean, the thing that Roscoe said was, write down your five core values and then when you start looking stick with your values and it might be, you know, it has to be in alignment with something like you might be looking at the, the, the vegan coin or whatever it is. I, I don't know if that's, if that's yeah. your thing. And then he said, that's, that's a good place 
to um, start. I think for me, like, I met one lady there. She's only been trading for the last 12 months and um, watching the signals and picking the highs, picking the lows, and she's made 70 grand and really didn't know what she was doing. But it's said it was, she said, well, 200 bucks, I don't know what the coin was. And she made, oh, it was something like 35 grand out of her 200 bucks because this coin just went up, you know. Yeah, up, yeah. And then bang. So the only issue she's had when, you know, one account she had 50 grand and I don't know what the account was, but it got frozen because they thought she was doing some sort of fraudulent activity. So then she had to get some of her tech mates on it to say, you know, I am legit, I'm not, not dodgy. And eventually, yeah, she managed to get her money. But she said, as you said before, I'm being unregulated. There's all these unknown things. Mm. Absolutely, it's got to be a bit careful as you trade. Um, I mean, that's like, reassuring when you when you know that someone could turn like a thousand bucks into seventy thousand, and she doesn't even know what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, well, she's she's got um, you know, half an idea now, and um, I'm going to catch up with her. I haven't got it written down. What did she say? I can't even think of the name of the guy. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll have to send it to you. I've got it written down here. But yeah, there's just another thing. Just a bit like watching. I've got the books for. Um, that's uh, Andrea Santonopoulos' books, and that's another person that um, Roscoe recommended that we start reading and following because he's yeah. I've seen him on the website as well. Um, I haven't got anything specific except my head spinning because I've just got the information overload right now, so I've got to go through this. Um, right. I guess the thing, the other thing that he did bring up, which I've started looking at, is when you bring up a particular coin that you might be interested in, is go into it look at the white paper, see the activity on what's happening on the white paper. He said, you know, if they're doing regular updates of the software, look at the dates, how much um, time and effort is going into the upkeep of this coin. There's not much activity. Chances are it's not doing that great. And suddenly looking at the graph and you can see, well, it might have gone down, but it is going up. Or if it's just flat lining and it's slowly going down, well, they might not yeah. be putting technology into keeping that coin updated, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, so that's it. I've been just going on now looking at the white papers and having a read. And you see, even look at the people in the development and who they are and just have a read of their profiles. And it may just give you a sense on um, where it's at, even if you don't know who they are or, or where they're from. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just his perspective on that. So. Yeah, you, you can also check them out on, on LinkedIn. A lot of the time they're, they're connected in with their LinkedIn or their Facebook profiles and you can actually suss them out and make sure they are real people. Because it's pretty easy to make a free website and just have pictures of you know, Google images of a, of a good-looking CEO and a good-looking secretary and that sort of stuff. And it could be a total scam. So if you, if you look for them on Facebook or LinkedIn and find out, yes, they are really an actual person, what their background is, what their friends do and things like that. Because, um, you know, we're, we're all new in this space, but they might have come from finance, they might have come from banking, they might have come from technology. One guy I saw today was a um, biomedical engineer. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, suss these people out and find out, are they going to be the good people who, you know, are going to be looking, basically looking after their money? Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I've, I've probably just looked at this week myself, I looked at a half a dozen, and you've mentioned IOTRA, I had a look at that. Verge, yeah. um, or Power Ledger was another yeah. one. Um, Enigma, I mean, Litecoin is already out there. It's probably you know, more well known. It's the few that I've been looking at. But again, I'm still in the research and learning stage. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at Litecoin today, actually, and it's down. Oh, we've got some echo there. Um, yeah, Litecoin's down about 50% from where it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, but if you look at where it was 12 months ago, it's actually gone up by over 10,000%. Yes. So might represent a, a little buy-in opportunity when it's, when it's dropped back down by, you know, 40, 50%. So, but again, making yeah, sure making the sure. fundamentals are right. So. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's exactly what they were saying at this presentation is say if you were doing the market and looking at the signals and you'll see them dropping off and you go, okay, or oh, it's turning to shit. But you look back 12 months ago, and even when they were showing the trading of, you know, the, look at the, the 24 hour window and look at the four hour window, even that four hour window, you might see it go up and then four hours later it drops off because it's so yeah. volatile, but it doesn't yeah, mean yeah. it's crashing. It's just the volatility of the market. So. 
Yeah, yeah. There's, there's some people who might have got in yesterday. You know, it's maybe happening while we're sleeping. As as Linda was saying, it's it's open twenty four seven. There might have been some people who got in and then, like, you know, three hours later, it's gone up by two hundred, three hundred percent. So they just pull their money out and they sell, and then it yeah. goes back down again. And then the next country wakes up and they start pumping it. So, mm. yeah, it's a bit of a fun game at the moment. It's yeah, it is, as, as it is very volatile. Um, but you can make a lot of money out of the volatility as well. So you can, you can buy back in. Um, yeah, look, this I think particular I, lady, the one that I mentioned before, she's, that's what she's doing. She's just watching it and she'll see it spike and then she's um, selling or whatever she's doing, how she's managing it. And yeah. it's just, I don't know, she's watching it all day. She thinks at particular times in the day when she concentrates on it. But again, she's only playing with 100, 200 bucks and it just has this massive yeah. couple of thousand percent rise and she's bang, yeah, bang, yeah. Bang, so. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's that's one of the good things about this is you can jump in with a hundred dollars, where you couldn't do that with the stock market. That's right. You have to have at least a five hundred dollar parcel. Um, but yeah, drop drop in a hundred dollars, and if you lose it, you just go, oh well, damn. But if it goes up ten thousand percent, then it's it's kind of reasonable. So, mm. Mm. yeah. Thank you, Matty. Or um, yeah, check the check the Crillionaire website as well. Under the resources, you'll find about twenty different coins that I've done a bit of research on. Yeah. Um, I haven't bought all of them because you know I've only got so much cash, and you haven't you haven't bought me a coffee yet. So I've I've bought into maybe eighty percent of the ones that I've actually I've, I've researched um, and and put on the website there. So have a look at those, and of course do your own research, and I'll give you the tools in about five minutes to better enable you to do that. Um, again, you got to buy, promise to buy me a coffee and promise not to tell Roscoe because I've, I've worked on this. This is my little creation. <laughs> oh, well, look, look, I don't know Roscoe. Um, we aren't in connection with each other, so I'm, I won't be yeah. telling anything. That that's, I mean, Roscoe, uh, like the big picture with him is he's offering a, a program where you can pay three grand and do his extended week program where you spend time with him and his team. And that was the old yeah. thing behind his promotion. Yeah, I think I've got to do one of those, mate. I, I can't be handing out my time for five dollar cups of coffee. I've got to do the three grand workshop. So anybody who wants to wants to, you know, enrol in that, just put your name in the um, put your name in the box. Yeah, yeah, so, well, yeah absolutely. Why not? I mean, it's, it's your time now that you're selling. So. Yeah. So Quentin, you weren't on the call last week. Did you did you manage to get to watch a copy of the video? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yep. 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 I watched it. Um, yeah. you, you've done some homework, you've got some questions. What do you got to share with us? Um, I was just, I think I put it in the email asking you whether you think it's better to do it under a business or a personal name. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And I, I can see Lindsay is asking also about um, minimizing tax as well. The, the, the interesting thing is uh, a lot of these exchanges and a lot of the wallets, um, they're asking for individual ID for verification. So you, 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 know, you basically download a little app to your phone and then you take a photo of your passport or you take a photo of your driver's license so they verify you as an individual. Um, it's only later on when you can actually start saying that, that you're a company. And that, that brings up some, some really interesting stuff. I, ha I had a chat with a, a friend of mine this week as well um, about the different protocols and, and different codes and things like that, because we, we started off by saying that Bitcoin was anonymous, but it's actually not anonymous. You know, you do have like a little account number and you know, Quentin, if, if you sent me five dollars to to pay for a coffee or to whatever, um, then I've got your account number, and I can search the internet. I can search through the blockchain for your account number. I can't steal your money, and I can't see how much money that you've got, but I can see where you've sent money to other people. So it'll just say to me, you know, Quentin sent five dollars to me. Um, that account number also sent twenty dollars to this person and ten dollars to that person, a thousand dollars to that person. I don't see who the other people are. So as, for all I know, you're buying food and electricity. But there are some people, and and Matt was talking about this before. Is there's some people who are the, the scammers, and they'll have a picture of them in front of a Ferrari in a beautiful building, and they'll say, "Look, I'm a multi-billionaire, and I'm going to show you how to trade crypto." Um, but if you send them some money, then you've got their their account number. You can see that they're only spending four hundred dollars a week. Yeah. So you know they're actually full of shit. Yeah. So with, with Bitcoin not being totally anonymous, there's just billions of bits of information running around. Uh, and and um, 
we were talking before about having your account frozen. Matt was saying that lady had her account frozen temporarily. So if you're under suspicion, then it's not the regulators. There's no police, there's no tax office, there's no ASIC or someone who'll come down on you. But if I, if, I, if I communicate with the network and say, hey, look, Quentin owes me $5, they just go, we don't care. Nobody cares. But if I yeah. say, you know, I paid $10,000 to Quentin to teach me how to trade and he didn't teach me, they're going to say, well, that's an argument between you two guys. Yeah. But if they receive 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 requests from all of these people saying, hey, we all paid 10000 to Quentin and he hasn't taught us how to trade, then they can actually lock your account. Because it's, yeah. it's, again, it's the Wild West. It's like mob justice. So they can jump in there and they can lock your account. Now, if you're in business and you're doing the wrong thing, you could actually have XYZ Proprietary Limited. You could scam a whole bunch of people. And then when they come after you for the money, you just bankrupt that company, close it down, and then you start up ABC Proprietary Limited and move to a new town. And that was okay because the individual person wouldn't go to jail. It's just the company that actually gets shut down and gets into trouble and you just bankrupt the company and start again. But because all of these wallets are connected to your passport, your driver's license, it's you as an individual that will get punished. And this is why Bitcoin's actually better than the banking system because with the GFC, all these CEOs who are doing the wrong thing didn't go to prison and they kept their money, most of them. Um, whereas in this system, someone could actually freeze your personal account. You might have $12 million in Bitcoin that you've scammed all these people out, but your account's frozen and you can't spend it. Yeah. And as the next few years progress and we see the US dollar and the Aussie dollar being used less and less and less and cryptocurrencies being used more, you will be just won't be able to walk into a shop and buy a coffee. You won't be able to pay your rent. You won't be able to do these things because your account is locked up. Yeah. So, it, was, it was more that... Um, over the years, I've been a very successful internet marketer. So I'm actually using the profits out of my internet marketing to invest in the crypto coins. I was more interested from everybody's point of view. And obviously that has GST included with it. So when I take money out, it goes into my business account and it's counted as income. So that's fine yes. by me. I'm doing everything right. It's just how different people do it. So it was, what do you think about that side of things? Should I be cancel it and do it as an individual or? Dep depends on how much money you're going to make. Um, I've, I've helped a few business owners to set up some tax exempt business structures. Uh, these are exempt from income tax, exempt from GST and exempt from capital gains tax. Right. Now it's perfectly legitimate, perfectly legal. There's millions of people around the world who have these types of organizations. Um, these are the ones who just literally don't don't pay tax or, or pay very low very low rates of tax, like two percent to five percent, and it's usually the billionaires who have actually got that. But normal people can actually emulate these these structures that the millionaires and the billionaires use to minimise their tax way down to to two percent or five percent. Yeah. So you can have that, and that's basically it's it's like repatriating money. Like you you send some money out to the internet world, or you send some money over to America to invest in something. And realistically, the Australian government doesn't know about that yeah. until, until you bring the money back into the country and it lands into an Australian bank account with an Australian tax file number, then they can actually see into that. They've got jurisdiction into that. However, if you, if you have a tax exempt organisation, you can have your accounts in Australia, like, you know, Commonwealth accounts and ANZ accounts and whatever, but they don't have a tax file number on them. So yeah. the tax office can't actually see money going in and out of there. And it's up to you to self-report or to not report to pay tax or not to pay tax as you see fit. Yeah, well, I was reporting it too because I'm selling a lot of my accounts online. I've added Bitcoin and some other coins to for people to buy products. So obviously yep, yep. that's also coming into the business. That's why I kept it under the business name. Yeah. yeah. If, if, you, if you're selling products and you're taking payment in Bitcoin or Ethereum, yeah. then the ATO and ASIC and, and the bank doesn't actually know about that. And you can accumulate massive amounts of Ethereum. Um, yeah. And then you can actually get like a, a Fusex card or one of these other cards, a bank error card. And you can actually use that. Like it's just a visa card. Yeah, and yeah. you can just go on a holiday and you can be spending your crypto, not actually spending your, your money out of your bank account. So again, right. it's completely off the books. It's completely not known about. And, you know, it's just between you and God. So in, in the olden days, you know, before 1913, when there was no income tax, 
if you accumulate the massive amount of money like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and you wanted to build a school or contribute to the hospital or build some roads, you could do that. It was up to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a lot of people who are actually doing that in, in the crypto space. And the people that I'm talking to who are making more and more money than they ever dreamed possible from, from traditional investments are suddenly becoming very, very generous. Yeah, and yeah. they're talking to me about that because I've, I've been supporting education in Africa and Indonesia for the last eight or 10 years yeah. um, through a couple of organizations and saying, look, what can I do? How can I help the orangutans and the panda bears? So it's, it's really good to see people becoming more generous yeah. when they're freed from paying compulsory tax or when they're suddenly making a lot more money than what they used to. So it's a good thing. Yeah, well, we're doing the same through Thailand. I'm trying to get them to set up an account so we can just send them Bitcoin instead of doing it through the banks, which charges yeah. 20 or 30 bucks every time we do it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I did the same thing at, at Christmas time. So, and, and Muliani in, in Bali, I've, I've paid her, her Christmas bonus in, in Bitcoin because it was much cheaper for me. It was, I think it cost about 16 cents to transfer it through Bitcoin and it cost $25 to send it through traditional methods, particularly going into Bali. So, so I'm, using and she, OMG, yeah. I'm using that OMG in Thailand. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that's a Thailand based coin. Mm hmm. It's O M I S E or something, but it comes up yeah. with O M G in my coin. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it was just before you came on, I was talking about um, the, the dominant coins in India and Africa as well. So, and looking at what's in China, because they're, you know, basically three quarters of the world population between just those, those three continents. Um, and, and, you know, don't ignore them because these guys are, are very much early adopters. Um, even, even when I was in Africa, you know, almost 10 years ago, there, there was no currency. There wasn't enough, enough paper money and the paper money they did have was worthless. People would actually swap phone credit. So I have like $5 phone credit. You've got $2 worth of phone credit. I would text you $3 worth of phone credit from my smartphone to yours. And if you did really, really need cash, you could go into a shop and you could actually text $5 to the shopkeeper and he would give you $5 out of the till. So they didn't even need ATMs. They yeah. found a solution. You know, if there's no banks open, if there's no ATMs, if there's no money, they found a solution to their problem. And this is the amazing things that are, that are happening. So Lindsay, does that answer enough of your questions about tax or do we need to, to go back and, and look at the tax seminar again? Um, no, I think, I mean, the answer is, I think if you want more information, it's more about, you know, that's a whole different call then, isn't it? Because there's quite, probably yeah. there's quite a lot to go into. But I yeah. think we've touched briefly on that before when we've spoken yes. at, at different times. So it's probably the same thing that you've spoken to me about. It's just setting that up and then would you just thinking like you're saying everything like with the wallets is set up in your name. So is it just then somehow then you would put that into say Australian dollars and put it in your bank account that doesn't have a tax fund on board? Cause yeah. So I've set up my CoinSpot and Coinbase and CoinJar and whatever all the other things are. Um, and it just mm -hmm. takes my driver's license and my passport. It doesn't ask me for a home address. It doesn't ask me for a tax file number. It's outside of the jurisdiction of, of the tax office. Yep. So whatever millions I accumulate out there, the tax office doesn't know about. And if I spend them on one of the Fusex cards or one of the little Visa link cards or Bankera cards, then again, the tax office doesn't know about it. Um, I probably wouldn't raise the alarm bells by suddenly buying a Ferrari and parking it in your front yard because someone's <laughs> going to say, where did that come from? Um, yeah. Are you selling drugs on the weekends or something like that? Yes. <laughs> but if you, if you have a business structure, which is a tax exempt business structure, and the business just happened to you know, gift you a Ferrari as a bonus or you know, pay for your lease payments on the Ferrari or something like that, then that's mm. completely legit. So... That's cool. The Australian government's not going to let this go on without getting their little dirty hands in it, are they? So they're probably be going to be asked somebody like CoinSpot to start producing what's happening. Up, do you think or not? They, they've got no power over it. That's the thing. This, this is the free market, Quentin. Um, yeah, the, the governments would like to have control. I mean, I mean China's said, you know, we're going to ban Bitcoin mining operations, we're going to ban Bitcoin from China. But at the same time, the Chinese government is working on making their own cryptocurrency. So, and, you know, they, they live in a totalitarian society where they can actually say to the citizens, you know, you have to use our cryptocurrency whether you like it or not. So they realise this is the future. 
Um, but if the Australian government suddenly told us we all had to wear, you know, black shirts or blue hats or whatever, we'd tell them off. There's a lot more of us than there is of them. Yeah. And they can't arrest everybody. So yeah. if everybody in Australia started trading crypto and making a thousand percent every weekend, <laughs> and we all wanted to buy Ferraris or we all wanted to, you know, walk naked down the street, they can't arrest everybody. So they're going to have to try and make the laws and the new legislation as fast as we can make innovation. It's simply not going to happen. They've, yeah. they've dropped the ball on it. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very, very, very interesting. As I say, it's, it's the Wild West markets at the moment. So, um, yeah, on, as, on that as well, Quentin, because you weren't on the last call, um, we do ask you to come back next week and, and have a bit of research on a couple of coins that you've looked at. So three coins, preferably that you've looked at that you think are good and you can share with the group and we'll say whether we think they're good or worth your money or whatever. And we might actually learn a couple of things. So Lindsay's been looking at Tron, um, Sia and Digitech. And I think Matt was looking at Enigma. Yep. And I've, I've put about 15 or 20 coins onto the Krillionaire website as well. And some of those are really excellent technology. Um, yep. As I say, about 80% of them I've, I've actually put funds into as well. So. Well, I've, 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 I'm in Tron and I've looked at Tron, yeah. but um, there's a lot of uh, not very nice things about Tron that they've copy and pasted all their white sheets and yeah. a lot of, lot of anti stuff as well. So, yeah. But it's making money, so I don't really care. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember when I worked in the bank, people used to complain about the bank and the bank fees are too high and the bank charges are too high and they charge you $7.50 for a bank check and the money order from the post office was only $2.50. And I, all these people who complain about the bank fees, I said, if you owned the bank, would you complain that the fees were too high? And they'd go, no, because I'd be making all the money. And I will go home and buy some bloody bank shares yeah. and then you won't care. You invest into it. Yes. Yeah. So, it's a good way of doing it. JT, are you there? Do you want to say something? Uh, I thought I saw you come in the room. Are you there, JT? Nope. Okay. If you are, you've got nothing to say. So we've done a little bit about tax deduction. Um, I'm going to put up the presentation as well for how to reduce your tax by 90% in about 15 minutes. Um, for those people who want to watch that, it's just a quick, a very quick video. Um, it'll give you a lot more information in very rapid fire and what you can do about that. So what else did we promise today? We're gonna to talk about who wants to invest in crypto in their superannuation fund. Is anybody interested in that? Yes. Yes, one person. Yes, I'd be interested to know more. Jeremy. Okay, okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. We don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Um, <laughs> But that was one that I was, I was actually curious about um, because I've got a lot of my old, old superannuation from when I was working in the bank and when I worked at McDonald's and waited tables back in the day that's just been sitting there um, because obviously as a, as a business owner, thanks Matt, I'm just laughing at Matt's comment. Um, as a business owner, it's up to you whether you pay your super or whether you put your money into stock shares or, or property or something like that. But as an employer, you, you must get paid super. Those people with a lot of super just sitting around and if it's in a managed fund or a managed portfolio mutual fund, you're probably making you know, 5% or 8% a year. So number one, you're going to have to get a self-managed super fund rather than the off the shelf super fund that you've got at work. That's going to cost you maybe three to $4,000 to set up from the accountant. Okay, you may be able to find a cheaper option, maybe one or two thousand um, dollars to set up a self managed super fund, and it's still going to cost you three thousand dollars a year to have someone administer it. So it's just one of those those uh, fees that are carved in stone because that's just the way it is. So whether you've got a hundred thousand dollars in there, a hundred million dollars, it's going to cost you a minimum of three three thousand dollars a year to get someone to administer it. Um, so on the, on the Krillionaire website, um, where I've listed the, the exchanges, like there's Bittrex and BT Finance, uh, BTC Markets and, and these other ones, Binance is, is the biggest one in the world at the moment. Um, 
There's actually one there and I've forgotten their name temporarily. Someone will tell me if you're looking on the Krillionaire under the resources where you can actually buy, um, you can buy cryptocurrency inside of your superannuation fund. So the link is there. You can jump onto that one. Um, but obviously first you'll need to have a self-managed super fund because you can't just ring the fund manager and say, I'd like to buy crypto instead of buying government bonds. So, um, okay, Muliani has put in the coffee link there for anybody who'd like to buy me a coffee via PayPal or um, Bitcoin. Um, oh, we, we already talked a little bit about the ERC721, which is the, the protocol code where they can actually freeze your account. Um, so Ethereum has all this wonderful, wonderful backend technology. Obviously there's the Ethereum coin, but the Ethereum network um, is the amazing technology behind it. It's like the, the new internet and you can jump onto the Ethereum platform. You can create your own coin. And as I say, you can, you can lodge a complaint and say, you know, Quentin's run away with my Ferrari or, you know, $10 million or whatever. And if there's a significant amount of people who are saying this person's done that, then they can actually use the code inherent in the Ethereum network to actually freeze that person out. So I, I compare it to the olden days, you know, if you were in the village and the blacksmith was, was, you know, ripping off people and charging them for swords and only giving them rubber ducks, then, you know, if 20 other people, if it's just one argument, you go outside and have a fight. But if there's 20 people accusing the one person, they usually threw them outside of the town and said, okay, you can't deal with us anymore. And that person has to go and live by themselves and try and survive as best as they can. Once you get excluded from the crypto community, then you face becoming a pariah. Basically, you just be an outcast like a leper because it doesn't matter how much money you've got, you can't be part of the system. You can't actually spend it. Unlike again, like the banking system, you know, we've got people like Donald Trump who have been bankrupt four times. They just close down the company. They come back and start again. So he can still uh, run around inside of this system and still live a very good lifestyle, even though he owes people hundreds of millions of dollars because he's protected by the corporations, he's protected by the banking system. But this is the Wild West and we do mob justice. So, um, Lindsay has a question. How long would you recommend buy and hold? Who would like to field that question? Matt, you've been doing all the research? Me, I'm still learning. Buy and hold, I mean, how long is a piece of skin that's volatile? So how do you work that one out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, ha there have been some interesting ones where, you know, coin, the coin's doubled, then it's gone down by 30, 40%. I mean, even, even Bitcoin itself, um, <laughs> back in the early days, I think it was like, you know, two cents, it went up to about $6, then it went up to $9, then it dropped back down to a dollar um, and stayed there for like two years. And if you had a sort of went, oh shit, I paid $6 for this thing and it's only worth a dollar. If you sold it back then, you'd be kicking yourself. So, yeah, I mean, buy, buy and hold, I'd, I'd sort of compare it to, again, like the Googles and the MySpaces and the, and the Yahoos and that sort of stuff. Um, at this stage, we don't know. There's a site called deadcoin.com or deadcoins.com where you can actually go and see the ones who have already gone bankrupt, the ones who have already disappeared and they've only been out for like, you know, maybe one to two years. And on that space at last check, there was about 250 coins. So 250 coins that have disappeared and, and died out of almost two and a half thousand. That's pretty okay. That's pretty okay. It's like, you know, one, one in 10 has disappeared and the ones that have survived, the average returns on, on the whole market have been almost 1500%. So if you lost 10% of your money and the 90% made 1500%, you'd still be very, very happy. So I've got two accounts and I'm doing indexing on one. Yeah. So I've got the top 30 coins and there's a yep. site called PCI something.com. Yeah. And it's gone through and got the 30 top coins. So I've just evenly balanced my um, investment in those 30 top coins. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just letting it sit and it's doing quite well. Yeah. And the other one, I do a bit of trading. And actually, my holding ones made about as much as I have trading. So. <laughs> you know, the trading one, I'm a little bit more aggressive on. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm doing that for a, for a private client at the moment. 
Um, and my, my personal trades, because I've been in the field for a long, long time, I tend to take bigger risks with my own money because I understand the system and it's my money, you know. So I'm only going to kick myself if it goes down. But when I'm trading for this private client, I, I put her money into much more secure options. And she's still doing really, really well. Um, but then, you know, if, if something goes wrong, I don't want to have her in the, all the speculative ones because she's going to beat the hell out of me, you know. Um, so it's just di different approaches when you're working with someone else's money. And that's what I did in financial planning. I, I always used to pretend it was my mum's money for my clients and I would invest theirs more safely and securely. And maybe they'd get, you know, 10 or 15 or 20% return. And in my own portfolio, I'd get 300% one day and then minus 50 the next. So... Can I put the website in the chat? Yeah, sure, sure thing. Okay. Um, I mean, as an exercise this week, I also looked at, you know, how simple is it to, to launch a coin? Um, being as, as this stuff is, is open source, like there's, there's the internet out there. And back in 1995, when I made my first website, I had to learn HTML code. And I had to learn how to put all this stuff in and why it didn't work. And all of a sudden now we've got things like Wix and we've got things like WordPress where you can just make a free website and you just drop and drag and pull things in here. And someone's already done the coding for you. Um, so I've actually created an index coin, which I was up till about one o'clock this morning uh, working on the website for that and looking at, you know, if I, if I was wanting to invest into crypto for the first time, what would I want to invest into? And is looking at the top, the top 200 coins and also the top 200 tech stocks because while everyone's out there, you know, doing the, doing the crypto stuff, there's some people out there mining. Um, so shares in NVIDIA, the graphics card company have gone through the roof. So this is one little company has just been making graphics cards for, for gamers and people to watch 3D videos. Um, but since they realized they could actually mine Bitcoin using these graphics cards, the shares in the company have gone up about 1,500, 1,600%. Um, and there's other companies out there who are not actually making coin, but they're making the things that the coin runs on. So the technology, the artificial intelligence platforms and things like that. So these are some of the things that I'm looking at. And so I've actually launched my own little coin and just said, okay, anybody who buys that coin is going to have access to the top 200 cryptocurrencies and the top 200 tech stocks in there. So it's just like a, like a pooled fund, like your superannuation fund, buying stocks and shares and a lot less volatility than um, you know, buying one or two coins in the market. But it's relatively easy. I didn't need to know programming. I didn't need to understand how the blockchain works in order to jump in and do that because it's all been created for me. And you can just assemble code on top of that. So how are we going for time? Muliani's got a finger on the button. We've got a couple of minutes left. Um, okay, yeah, there's a couple of... A couple of exchanges which will close down every now and then like poloniex was closed today um, that's one of the biggest ones binance was closed a couple of days ago and it's really a fact of you know they've, they've built to, to a certain constraint they go okay we're going to be able to handle a hundred thousand customers a week but then all you guys are out there talking to your friends on facebook about how much money you're making out of crypto and then all of a sudden they get four hundred and fifty thousand people trying to enroll on a website that can only process a hundred thousand a week. So it, it, they just have to shut it down. Otherwise it'll blow up their, blow up their hardware. And there's some that say, Oh, look, we have to close down for two hours and we'll be open for an hour. Then we'll close down for two days. Then we'll open for a couple of hours. So it's a good idea to have a couple of different exchanges that you're operating on. Um, and then you've got some, got some backup if you still want to trade while the exchange is closed. But otherwise, if your exchange is closed, it could be a day for you to just not be in the market and take a little holiday that day and let the, let the market do what it wants without you stressing about it. So, very good. Um, any other questions? Any things I forgot to cover this week? Um, we did the tax. We did the ERC721. We did the superannuation. Um, we didn't go through too many coins. Um, but I have got, as I say, I've got about 20 listed on the Krillionaire.com website. I've got about another 30 that I've been researching in the last couple of days. And I will be having discussions with the guys from Africa and India tonight, as well as going to a crypto meeting uh, in Brisbane later this week. Jeremy, so, can I ask a quick question, yep. please? 
Um, it might seem like a bit of a um, crystal ball question or answer, but to be successful or to make, I guess, good money out mm -hmm. of this, how much time a day do you need to invest in one day to do this? Like, I'm I know so glad you asked that question. I'm so glad you asked that question. Okay. I, no, I've it's promised... a bad question. No, it's a fantastic question. I promised earlier that I was going to give you the patented system. And Matt, you didn't remind oh. me about this. This is the way to choose the best cryptocurrencies. So right. grab your pen, write this shit down. This is, this is fantastic. Okay. And it's, it's patented. It's, it's, it's all this proprietary material that I've, I've worked on. Well, yeah, under, under financial planning for many, many years, um, which we're now adapting to the crypto world. So four step process for choosing the best crypto and then holding onto it or deciding whether or not to hold onto it. So, we write down the acronym COIN, running down the left-hand side of your page, C-O-I-N. And the first thing we want to look at under C is who's the CEO, who's the CFO, who's the CIO, who are the people who are actually running this thing? Do they know what they're doing? Is it the guy who used to work for Twitter? Is it the guy who used to work for a bank? Or is it just some guy operating out of his garage? Because, you know, that's where his mum put him when he was naughty. You want to check out the C-suite, all the people who are actually in charge of this thing. Again, check them on Facebook, check them on LinkedIn, check to make sure they're actually real people and the photos line up with real people and that they are actually aligned with the project that they say they are. So you want to suss out those people, make sure they're legit for a start. Okay, under O, we want to find out operations. What does this coin do? What's its functionality? Is it just a coin like the doggy coin, which was going to go up and down and it was just a joke, or the Jesus coin, which was just a joke and ended up raising like $180,000 in, in one day? Um, what's the functionality behind this? What does it do quicker, better, faster? Is it the new Uber of the rental industry or the new Uber of the haircut industry? I don't know. You know, everybody wants to be the new Uber of something. I mean, obviously Bitcoin was cutting the banking system out and doing transactions in seconds rather than days. So the operation functionality of it, if it doesn't bring technology that does something better, faster or cheaper than what we had it before, then it's probably not going to last. How are we keeping up? Um, under I is the investors, the early stage investors. So obviously with Power Ledger, selling your electricity to the neighbors rather than selling it back to the grid. That was a great idea. Early investor into that was Richard Branson because Richard Branson on Necker Island, he's got a lot of solar panels and all this sort of stuff. Um, so he's all over the green energy. Um, the second investor into that was Origin Energy because they realized they were gonna get cut out of the party. So when you see someone who's a serious business operator, Branson's been running 400 businesses over the last 40, 50 years, and Origin Energy is obviously a big player here in Australia. And you see people like that piling into an investment, then you know it's actually gonna be, be going well. But if it's just your brother-in-law has told you about a winery and he knows a bloke who knows a bloke who drinks a lot of wine, then that might not be a good investment for you. So we've got C, we've got O, We've got I, N is for network. Now you want to check out with these projects, their social network, their social footprint. Are they on Twitter? Are they on Facebook? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Telegram? Are they on Slack? Are they on YouTube? Who's talking about this one? Because obviously you want to find out there's a lot of people talking about it because that's what causes the price to go up when everybody's buying in. Uh, you can have the greatest technology in the world, but if nobody knows about it, then the price is not going to go up and you're not going to sell any product. Um, also, you want to find out very early on when there's going to be a problem with that. And if you're on their Twitter feed and all of their customers are complaining to them and saying that the network doesn't actually work, then you're going to know that you may want to actually jump out of that one. So that's the proprietary system, which I have a simple four-step process, easy to remember, COIN, C-O-I-N. CEOs, operational functionality, early investors, and their network. Now you apply that process when you're looking at the coins, it'll be very easy for you to sort through all the crap ones and start to spend more time 
with the good ones. So in answer to the question, how much time should you spend a day on it? It should take you maybe five or 10 minutes to sift out a lot of the rubbish. And then if you want to, you might spend 20 minutes, you might spend an hour looking at one particular coin. And that's okay, because if that one particular coin is gonna make you 1,000% or 2,000% or 10,000%, then it's well worth your time invested. Cool, so I'm glad for that question. Thank you, I got to fit that in. We start on time, we finish on time, we have a great time. Did we achieve all our goals, everybody? Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Fantastic, all right, shoot me an email, have a, have a check out of the website, and I will chat to you again next week. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Jeremy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Bye. Lindsay, go to the mining. We'll chat about that. Send me an email. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Good night. Sure. Bye. Bye, everyone.